Even if you've never set foot in a chemistry lab, chances are you know a thing or two about acids and bases. For instance, have you ever drunk orange juice or soda? If so, then you know some common acidic solution. And if you've ever used baking soda or even egg whites in your cooking, then you're familiar with some bases. In fact, the interaction between buttermilk, which is acidic, and baking soda, which is basic, brings us the fluffy magic that is buttermilk pancakes. So what are acids and bases? You may have noticed that acidic things tend to taste sour, and that some basic things, like soap or bleach, tend to feel slippery. But what does it actually mean for something to be acidic or basic? To give you a short answer, an acidic solution has a high concentration of hydrogen ions, greater than that of pure water, and a basic solution has a low concentration of hydrogen ions, less than that of pure water. But wait, what is a hydrogen ion? An ion is a special type of atom that has an electrical charge. A hydrogen ion, then, is one that has a tiny electrical charge. An acid is a substance that increases the concentration of hydrogen ions in a water-based solution, usually by donating one of its hydrogen ions. In other words, acids have a lot of extra hydrogen that end up making the whole water-based solution more acidic. So the next time you enjoy the refreshing tanginess of a glass of orange juice, thank those extra hydrogen ions. A base, in contrast, provides hydroxide, or another ion, that scoops up hydrogen ions and removes them from the solution. So what is pH? pH measures the amount of hydrogen ions that exist in a given solution. The pH scale, which typically measures from 0 to 14, tells us how acidic or basic a water sample is. Think of pH like a ruler that we can use to measure how acidic or basic a solution is. The pH scale goes from 0 to 14. If a solution has a pH of exactly 7, it's neutral. This means it has an equal amount of hydrogen and hydroxide ions. Pure water is a neutral substance, and that's usually what we're looking for in streams. If a substance has a pH that is less than 7, it is acidic, and a pH greater than 7 is basic. A change of one unit on the pH scale represents a change in the concentration of hydrogen ions by a factor of 10. So looking at the examples in this photo, acid rain with a pH of 4.3 is over 10 times more acidic than uh, clean rain, which has a pH of 5.6. So why do we measure the pH in streams? Aquatic life has adapted to the natural pH levels in the bodies of water that they live in. So even slight changes in pH can have negative impacts on the health of the aquatic community. For example, moderate changes in pH can affect fish egg production, fish and insect gills, and amphibian populations. And pH also affects chemicals and nutrients in water. For example, in addition to affecting how much and what form of phosphorus is in the water, pH also determines whether aquatic life can even use that phosphorus. And in the case of heavy metals, metals tend to be more toxic at a lower pH because they're more soluble. So when we measure pH in our streams, we're looking for levels and changes that can indicate some human-caused problem in the watershed so we can go investigate. Just like the other water quality parameters we have discussed, there are several natural and human-made factors that influence pH in our streams. So first, geology and soils. Minerals released by the weathering of bedrock can affect water chemistry, including pH. In North Carolina, we have felsic rocks, which are more acidic, and mafic rocks, which are more basic. And if I pronounced either of those incorrectly, please let me know. So groundwater associated with felsic rocks tend to have a pH less than 7, and mafic rocks tend to yield a groundwater that has a pH greater than 7. So for pine and fir forests, decomposing needles of these trees add acidity to the soil and also influence the acidity of nearby streams. And for precipitation, when precipitation falls through the air, it dissolves gases like carbon dioxide and forms a weak acid. Natural, unpolluted rain and snow is slightly acidic and has a pH between 5 and 6. So for seasons, in the fall, when leaves and needles fall into the water and decompose, this may increase the acidity of the water. And last but not least, photosynthesis and respiration. During photosynthesis, aquatic plants remove carbon dioxide from the water. This can raise the pH. 
And since plants photosynthesize with sunlight, the pH of water will be highest during the middle of the afternoon and lowest just before sunrise. But of course, we do things that affect the pH of streams. So first, good old acid rain. Sulfuric acid, produced by coal burning industries, and nitric acid, produced by automobile engines, are major contributors to acid rain. Rainwater takes on the characteristics of the air it falls through, so a place with a lot of air pollution is also going to have polluted rain. So increased concentrations of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is very soluble in water, forming weak carbonic acid. As our atmosphere's carbon dioxide concentrations increase, our oceans and other waters become more acidic. So animals with calcium carbonate shells are harmed. Also point source pollution, which is pollution whose source we can point directly to. So for example, dumping industrial pollutants directly in water can affect pH. And we can point to that source because we can see the factory where it's happening. But also non-point source pollution can affect pH. So these are the little things that happen over the course of a watershed where you can't point to any one thing in particular as causing the issue. Examples include improper disposal of paint or concrete, bleach, detergents, or soap-based products that can affect pH. So these are the things that we're all doing or maybe not throughout the watershed on any given day. And also mining. So mining can expose rocks to rainwater and produce acidic runoff, which can introduce acids into the waterways. So what did we find at the library? 6.8, which is very close to that neutral pH of 7 that we really want to see in streams. So that's, that's some pretty good news. So what have we learned? We use pH to measure how acidic or basic a water-based solution is. The pH scale ranges from 0 being the most acidic, 14 being most basic, and 7 being completely neutral. And since so many animals are sensitive to pH, we measure pH in streams to get a better understanding of the health of the ecosystem. So thank you for tuning in to this video about pH. Up next, we're going to learn about nutrients.